mold two of the mystery molds I'm unveiling and creating. I'm gonna pick these two, as they say 764765A, so I think they go together. They're also from the same brand of mold makers. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. Hello, hello, I have been dying to show you this one. So we have a two for one deal, as I said before, I'll show you a look at the mold in a minute once we've opened it, but I pour this one up. So we've got a bigger piece and then we've got a flatter piece. And if you're familiar with the last series, you might have an idea of what this might be, but we're gonna reveal it. Now this piece actually holds a lot of nostalgia for me and I ended up making so many of them which you'll see soon but this one is actually coming with me to the markets that I've been vlogging about this is part of the stock that adds to the tally so oh, how satisfying was that peeling off I opened it up to reveal this gorgeous duck butter dish I am so in love oh my gosh look at all those feathers and the little ribbon around its neck and I also am kind of digging this simple plate it means that the duck will do the talking and because in the past we've had a mushroom butter dish where the mushrooms were also on the base plate but I think this is cool we can make this work so here you can see it says butter dish and the top says duck butter dish cover. Now, because it says 764 and 765, I was thinking, does the plate also have another top? I looked it up and it actually doesn't. This is part of a duck set. So the duck set's actually called Ducks of Bound. And you can see here, it's got a cute set of salt and pepper shakers. Um, I didn't know that a bicarbonate shaker was a thing, but now, you know, uh, must be because there was a lot of baking, I guess. And there's a soap dish as well. Really cool set, but that doesn't mean we can't use the plate for other tops and other things as well. I just thought that because it was so basic that it might actually have multiple interchangeable tops that you could use on top of it. Let's jump straight into the decoration of these pieces. I actually realized I did something that was a bit cheeky and I always put my favorite design that I painted at the end of the painting footage, but this week I'm doing my favorite first. I don't know why I do that. I need to keep you guys watching. Why am I putting the last one, my favorite one at the end? It might not be your favorite too. So I actually wanted to do this really funky kitsch idea. I wanted to do this rainbow duck so that the rainbow feathers transition to each color and I wanted them to be very vibrant and bright and I'm hoping that it won't really need much more detail because the feathers are so well indented that it should just bake on real nicely and not add any features. I did do two of these. So I did one with a white underglaze wash where I wiped it away and did sort of like an antiquing bring out the feathers and one without and I must say because the feathers are so detailed and so raised and so prominent it actually didn't need that underglaze washing at all they actually spoke for themselves but yeah this was my favorite one for this week so we're putting it at the start and we're just going to go down from here actually they're all great they're all great this one was just a standout because I hadn't really seen anything like this so from my research, I looked up duck butter dish and this is actually quite a popular duck butter dish that comes up on Google images. It's amazing. I saw so many different ones and so many variations and this one, I hadn't seen anyone do something like this, but the rest are gonna be kind of a stock standard interpretation of this mold, but just one that I really just had to do because you know, if you've got the mold, you gotta do it. So the next couple of designs are just leaving the duck butter dish plain white and then adding a colored bow. In particular, this one brings back a lot of nostalgia for me in particular. I don't know if anyone else had this growing up, but the blue ribbon, this sort of nice royal blue and it was everywhere. Or, or no, actually it was pastel blue as well. But I had this whole dining setting as a kid when I was growing up where it had these geese wearing ribbons and then it had like these pink flowers around it. And then there was also tiles in the kitchen that had ducks wearing 
ribbons and bonnets and it was just meant to be this like rustic farm core kind of aesthetic that the houses were going for at the time and at the time I was like oh this is a bit cringy but now I'm looking back and I'm like how sweet is that now we've got these plain boring white plates they were so fun and now that I come to think of it I'm always picking out the fun colorful plates anyway I don't know if anyone else had those sets of dinner sets but if you didn't and you had another set can you please let me know what the set was in the comments because I love hearing about funky dinner settings that people had oh so cool anyway I did want to pay homage to that I did I actually did two and I did one with a speckled white glaze on top to just play around with this idea of the white and see what the speckled glaze would look like but yeah for the rest of them I kind of did some bright colorful bows because they just contrasted so nicely against the white so with the speckled white glaze I was talking about before I'm hoping that this will kind of look like a speckled egg could <laughs> get it ducks lay eggs they lay eggs right I like that it could give it this sort of speckled egg look but then I also wanted to go one step further with two of them and I had this really cool glaze result come out. It's actually just a plain glaze from Amico, but I thought it was really cool. It's Art Deco Green, and I have been playing with this color in particular because when you put it over brown underglaze, like you can see here, I'm putting it over the top of a brown antique underglaze, it actually goes a bit purple. And so I wanted to do one where it kind of has this purple undertone, but then I also wanted to do one that was just that plain Art Deco Green, just because I just felt like it would suit a dark. Now the other thing is I also painted gosh I painted so many of these things I just really liked them okay <laughs> they were really fun I also painted a Miller duck which I've done before so you can just go back to other duck videos and see me paint those I felt like I didn't need to show you that again so you'll see the results of that at the end now let's talk about these simple plates and how we're gonna make this come together so I was thinking about it it's like oh it looks like a little duck swimming on a pond and I didn't want to go in and paint the whole thing because you're not really gonna ever see underneath the duck it would be cool to hide a little picture under there or like I don't know put maybe some feet on it I don't know just something that hides underneath the duck when it's swimming in a pond but then I was like let's just make it a little bit more like a pattern that goes around the rim of this plate and make it feel like a pond so I've done this like beautiful blue color I've done a couple different blues and I've added some lily pads and some lily pad style flowers and I just thought let's just keep this simple the duck needs to be the hero even though I could just go all out on this let's just keep it let's strip it back and just make it complement each other really nicely there were so many plates to fire so I popped them all in my little kiln and the biggie ducks they, they're there next we're just going to do the plates first okay so I popped them in and they turned out so so great I love I love the colors I love how they came out and I love that it's a really balanced repetitive pattern I haven't really done any of those before but I love how that turned out and then it was time to glaze these duckies now I just dipped them in it was actually a lot easier than doing the fingerprint touch up and I just sponged down the bottom of course so that there was no glaze on the bottom and then I popped them in and I popped them in my big kiln it was actually really fun to do a mystery mold in the big kiln and I popped them right at the top so that when we open it up it's like they're all swimming in my little kiln <laughs> here they are and are they phenomenal I am so impressed with these they look like they literally look like they're swimming right now and I love it <laughs> I'm pulling every single one out and I'm just checking for cracks and thank goodness there are no cracks in these. Let's talk about them. So this one I said before is my favorite. I forgot to mention that I add that white speckled glaze on the bow just to give it a bit of a oomph. I don't know. Um, I feel like it could also have a gold bow which would be really really cool. But for some reason this rainbow one it kind of reminds me of a cartoon character or something and I feel like that's meaning my country kitchen kitsch vibes that I, <laughs> I was trying to achieve <laughs> country kitchen kitsch say that 10 times I dare you you saw there that the white underglaze antiquing it was very subtle but I think I like it without the antiquing in the end with the rainbow one and then here's my Mella duck that I was telling you I'd show you the results at the end it turned out great I already knew it was gonna look fabulous I was fully confident uh, here we have a purple bow and then we've got like our pinky apricot peachy bow you know it's really hard to find nice pink underglazes it is really tricky this is the closest pink I have here is the comparison of that speckled glaze I 
like the white one better I think I think because the speckled glaze turns out a little bit blotchy and not as consistent as I was hoping for so fun fact you can't really get any slip that has this speckled feature because the speckles just sink to the bottom of the slip liquid so I was just trying to get this sort of speckled clay texture I mean you can suspend it somehow I'm sure but like most of the facts and pages and forums I've read you can't actually add a speckle to many slips I haven't actually tried adding speckle directly to the clay so this was my substitute it also muted out the detail of the feathers a lot so you don't get that really great depth of texture whereas this glaze this glaze made it look amazing uh, I love the feather details on this and you can see here that purple undertone pretty cool stuff that the glaze actually changed the underglaze color underneath or made it seem like it's purple looking here is one without the brown underglaze underneath and oh, the green just looks so nice. I love it. I love that the feathers really shine on every single piece. They might be a bit muted on the speckled ones, but in exchange, they kind of look like those speckled eggs you get at Easter time. So I'm kind of digging that. I love all of these so much. And I think keeping the plates really consistent and simple really complements the ducks a lot better. I feel like you could even just leave it a plain color and it would look amazing. Just let those duckies do the swimming you know what I'm saying I really love these I feel like I could even do some with gold bows like I mentioned before like even just a plain white one with a gold bow would be just so elegant I would absolutely love to know what you think of this piece have you seen a duck butter dish before do you use duck butter dishes I mean butter dishes just in general maybe <laughs> you have a preference to duck ones I don't know maybe you do let me know below Thank you so much for watching another mystery mold. As always, I love your support and your subscription so, so much. So thank you for joining me for another episode. And here is your sneak peek for the next one.